How important was the Peninsula War to the eventual defeat of Napoleon? That's the question we're trying to answer in today's short video. Yeah, it's a difficult question, that one. And you can, ar you can argue it either way. We have to understand that uh, this is an era of massive armies. And the real fight was on, you know, in the central part of the continent of Europe. So point number one, Britain's army is small and expeditionary, always has been, and it continues to be. It links up with uh, its long-term ally, and it is um, forced into an alliance with a country that it's um, traditionally been at war with. But the naval supremacy thing plays a part. You know, after all, the Iberian Peninsula is 3,003 hundred kilometers of coastline and that helped enormously and as uh fisher said who was first sea lord trafalgar may have um you know given the british sea supremacy and he wrote this at the beginning of the 20th century just prior to the first world war uh, but it didn't prevent austerlitz and that's the key thing here you know massive armies are needed to defeat massive armies you need boots on the ground so had Napoleon not invaded Russia and had he still have retained his large army, notwithstanding the fact that his relationship with Tsar Alexander since Tilsit 1807 was um, deteriorating, but he'd secured other alliances with his marriage to the Austrian princess um, and the Prussians were still reeling from the military defeats that they had uh, endured. And so I think it's fair to say that um, on its own, without the Russian campaign, that the peninsula would not have been the showstopper that it was, or it would not have achieved what it actually did achieve in the end. With Russia, it was pivotal. And that's the key thing, because had it not been ongoing, it had been unsuccessful and Napoleon had been able to come back from Russia and use the troops that he had in Iberia and uh, without the pressures of having to uh, establish treaties with the French like Valence, uh, with the Spanish like Valence, then I think things would have been different. So I think that, you know, it's a difficult question. Um, I don't want to overplay it. It was um, a great achievement by the Allies there, but it was made greater in terms of its achievements as a result of Napoleon's miscalculation with Russia. Yes, I, I just want to just to emphasize one point that Nick made there. I mean, at the Battle of Leipzig, I think there were close on 600,000 troops engaged. I mean, that's on a different scale to yep. what was happening down in the southwest of France and even at Vittoria. I think Wellington played a pretty masterful hand in the peninsula. I mean, to give the French a damn good thrashing. And I think he had this confidence and self-belief in himself, um, even in the darkest moments. I mean, the retreat from Talavera. OK, Talavera is a tactical victory, but he has to retreat from Talavera. The failure to take Badajoz in 1811, the absolute disaster of the siege, the retreat from Burgos in 1812. He, 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 he never gave up and he, he, he was really determined. So I think it's fair to say that if Napoleon had been able to concentrate his efforts purely on the peninsula, then it is unlikely that the Allies would have emerged victorious and been able to invade the south of France. But we also, as both Marcus and Nick have said, need to give credit to the Allies for being able to seize on French weakness and take advantage of their mistakes. I'm often asked, particularly in the comments, if the Allies could have won in Spain if Napoleon had not invaded Russia. But perhaps I should throw that question back and ask, could Napoleon have won in Russia if he hadn't had to keep so many men in Spain? As always with history, we'll never know, but it's a point worthy of debate. Feel free to comment with your own thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe. It will help this channel to grow and for more people to learn about Britain's glorious military history. Thanks guys.